Okay, cool. You guys ready? Um, I'm Jeff Johnson. Here, going to talk about uh, GeoGit and OpenStreetMap, and um, uh, basically, really talk specifically about the OpenStreetMap specific commands inside GeoGit um, rather than GeoGit itself. But as I've been talking to a bunch of you this week, um, this last last two days, I've realized. I should have probably put some more background information because it's, uh, oh, sorry, I'll stand over here. I should have put in some more background information because there seems to be a lot of questions. Um, anyway, uh, Victor Olaya, I don't know, many of you know him. He's the sextante maintainer um, in uh, QGIS and one of QGIS core com contributors, and he's actually been working on this OSM stuff. I'm just get to come and present about it, but he did all the interesting work. So, um, so GeoGit is a distributed version control system for geographic information, and it's, it is very heavily inspired by the, uh, by Git that we all use, most of us use on a pretty daily basis as developers. Um, and, but we've adapted to the problems in the, the spatial domain. And I, I put that there, it has no formal relationship with Git and it, the Git project and it's not built on top of Git. But everything we do, we go back and look at how Git has done it and follow along as close as we can. So this is, for instance, you know, every GeoGit clone is a full-fledged repository with history and full revision tracking capabilities and it's not dependent on network access or a central server and so you can branch and merge and it's just the same as Git in that capacity and um, so our current development has been on a GeoTools based uh, Java library um, and it's part of this rogue JCTD that's uh, funded by the Army Corps of Engineers. So if uh, you're a US taxpayer, this is your taxpayer dollars hard at work on open source. Um, and uh, so we've reached the stage of being feature complete and I can talk a little bit more about that but um, as of this month, we're going to put out, or the, the next last couple of days, next couple of days, we're going to cut the 0 0.3. It's clearly, it's very, very alpha um, software and not, you wouldn't put it into production today. But um, the main thing is that the future is distributed. Um, and we're talking about this um, with lots of our stakeholders and customers. And um, I, I guess we can come back to that, but the future really is distributed here. So. It's, again, it's a distributed version control system adapted to spatial data. So the commands are completely and very similar to Git ones, but um, they have different behavior adapted to spatial data being version. So you can see a diff here, right? Um, the, uh, it, the, the top part of the diff, uh, one of the attributes has changed, the bottom part of the diff, um, some points were moved. Um, and so that's a diff. We can look at the set of commands here. They look just like, uh, and sorry, if you have a phobia of the command line, you might want to go to the other talk, because this is, Pretty, uh, pretty uh, command line driven presentation here. So this is just GeoGit help, right? It's got all these same things that you would see in Git, cherry pick, check out, clone, uh, commit, uh, do your diffs, um, f uh, fetch, uh, log, ls, merge, um, and then we have these kind of specific commands. OSM is the one we're gonna talk about today. Uh, PG, PG, interact with Postgres database. You can do pulls and pushes and rebases and deal with remotes and do resets and reverts. Um, remove objects, do show, Sp shape is for um, obviously interacting with shape files, spatial light. Um, you can do things like squash, set tags, um, all that sort of thing. So it's, it, it's again very uh, heavily inspired by Git, um, but adapted to spatial data. So the key thing though is um, it allows for branching. So branching um, is, branches are very easy to create. Um, it's good for analyzing what if scenarios, you can merge them back in. So um, OpenStreetMap is, uh, has a very long history, but it's a single branch of history versus uh, many branches. Um, and uh, so this is kind of what we want to get to, or at least I want to get to, and many people want to get to, is like this concept of pull request in OSM, and we can talk about that a little bit more later. But so the key thing, though, um, is when you're dealing with merges or doing rebases, um, you're going to have to deal with conflicts, right? Merge conflicts. So this is the same sort of thing. I'm going to do a, a GeoGit merge, uh, merge in this branch, and it's noted that there's some conflicts here, can't do an automatic merge, fix the conflicts, and then commit the results. Um, you, you can, it also comes up during rebases, so, um, you know, it can't, can't apply this merge, right? I can't pull this branch onto this repo because there's some conflicts, and um, you need to go fix the conflicts before you, uh, before you merge this branch. Um, you can look at the, the diffs. Um, we have a couple different diff output formats um, for, we're working on visualization and uh, visualization of those diffs and also tools for merging them, which we'll talk about in a second. So conflict resolution is currently like command line interface, not very much interactivity, uh, kind of, uh, kind of uh, not super useful at the moment. Um, but a graphical three-way merge tool is on its way, which we'll look at in a bit. So um, Victor's been working this last, I don't know, month or so on adding uh, OSM-specific 
GeoGit commands. Um, so they're commands that replace the normal GeoGit commands with OSM specific versions and they offer um, additional extra functionality for working with OSM data. So OSM's the one uh, kind of, so far the one thing that we treat a little bit differently than um, traditional you know, shapefiles, spatialite databases, Postgres databases, Oracle databases, SQLite da or, uh, spatial, or SQL Server databases, that sort of thing. Um, so we have these OSM GeoGit commands. There's uh, import history, uh, import, uh, we'll look at these in a little more detail, download, um, do a map, um, which is uh, schema mapping, um, export to shape Postgres or Spatialite, do an unmap or create change set, and um, I'll go through these quickly. You can just take a look at these in your uh, favorite command line uh, tool, or um, you can look at them in my presentation. So there's the import history that will um, go and just pull change sets uh, in a range, a specific change set, um, or, or you know, you can start from change set one and go till now. I don't know what we're on now, but quite a few change sets. Um, you can do imports. Uh, this is osmosis based. Uh, we'll look at that in a little bit. You can download. This uses uh, Overpass API to pull from the pull from the Overpass API servers or anything that supports Overpass. You can use bounding boxes, filters, um, mapping. We'll, we'll talk about some of these things. Um, map and unmap. I'll come back to. This is again going from taking a mapping sort of the way you do it in Imposum and um, creating feature classes out of nodes and ways. Um, and then of course creating change sets and doing export out to other formats. Um, export shape, export Postgres, export Spatialite. Um, so inside, when, when you have OSM data in a GeoGit repository, um, it's all, all OSM data is stored in, in a fixed destination or initially in ways and node trees. And uh, in I don't know if you've looked at Git internals, each directory or top level directory in your Git repo is called a tree. Um, we don't really have subtrees, um, but in our world, a tree maps to something like a feature class or, so all, we stored in a sort of raw format in, o, in ways and nodes. And um, the bulk of the OSM commands assume that the data is structured this way, um, especially if you're dealing with history. Um, it can also be stored anywhere else in the repository and handled as any other data if you do a map. Um, but uh, you don't get the OSM specific functionality. You can't easily pull back from planet. So data mappings enable the use of OSM data inside your GeoGit repository with a custom schema that's different, dif different from the default uh, way and node schema. So there's a pretty simple, just a os osmosis based data import, GeoGit import, uh, GeoGit OSM import, throw out some PBF um, or OSM XML file. Um, once it's done the import, you can take a look, GeoGit show head node, so take a look at that. There's the schema there, change set location, stores the original tags, timestamp, user at last touched this feature, uh, the version of it, all the, all the sort of basic things you get out of the OSM API. Um, you can inspect the way, same sort of thing, has its collection of nodes, um, but, uh, and you can look at, a, I can look at, a, inspect a single node. Um, I think this is in Madagascar or something, I don't know who Joe Dalton 85 is, but, um, so that's a single node, here's a way, um, all the, you know, original tags are stored there as well. Um, so we keep this sort of in like a raw format in the, in the repository. Uh, did I have one more there? No. Um, so you can also, again, like I said, download from the Overpass API, uh, toss it a bounding box query, or uh, give it a complex Overpass API query. Here's a kind of simple one. Um, grab in this bounding box uh, where building is yes. Uh, once that's done, it'll go out to OSM, over, Overpass API grab those things, um, six million buildings apparently, uh, maybe that's not the same query. Um, it's adding them, committing them, and now we've, uh, I can look at the log, uh, I pulled that uh, OSM data, the uh, change set that I used to pull that is stored in the commit log so that when I go back to pull again from OSM, I know which change set I last worked with. Um, and then, uh, yeah, updating. So GeoGet logs the usage of the download command so that you can, um, match a commit to an OSM change set. So this can be used to do a poll, basically GeoGet OSM poll, we don't call it that, but um, you can update your cur current OSM data in the repository and considering that new changes were introduced. Um, and again, you may run into merge conflicts here. Um, so yeah, run the download upload, uh, download update command. It goes through, it's found new five new features that have been uh, in OSM planet since the last time you touched it. Um, it commits those, um, whoops, I think you get a log here. Yeah, so there we go, we've updated and um, pulled, pulled from the last one. You can inspect the diff. So this is the diff that came through. I think this was me adding a new building uh, using the ID editor. So you get the four, you get the four nodes and uh, the way created here. Um, and uh, I think that, yeah, that's it. So, and then again, like the, it's similar to the 
geo git pull command or what you would do git pull uh, or git fetch. Um, but uh, you can also do a rebase, um, and if you, any changes have been made in your local repository and the conflicts exist, the merge or rebase operation will detect that and tell you that you need to do a, you know, uh, fix, the, fix the diff. Um, you know, you, you, you need to resolve the diff before you, before you commit during the pull operation. Um, so current limitations with this update, uh, this is like the GeoGit OSM pull. The op uh, operation is not super optimal now. Um, it it re-downloads the entire set of data that's specified by your original uh, overpass API query. Um, the, there's, there is a newer, newer clause in the overpass API, but it doesn't report features that were deleted. So um, things that were deleted in OSM, uh, we don't have any way of knowing about that. We just know what's been added or changed since that newer clause, so we don't actually use it yet. And um, the OSM API itself doesn't allow for flexible filtering when you're pulling history. So we kind of need the best of both world, history and filtering. And um, I think Victor's going to spend some time talking to the folks that work on the Overpass API and see if we can get a few changes in there. I should take this chance to, um, in, ch chance to explain. In, in, in GeoGit, we have concept of uh, sp mm, sparse clone, we call it, um, but which is essentially like what you do with the Overpass API. You're subsetting a repository, getting a subset either based on geometry or based on uh, some tag filters. But we also have the concept of a shallow clone, which means I don't need the entire history, every, every revision of this thing. I only need the last two or three revisions, right, of a feature. I don't, you know, let's say I wanted to clone uh, geo names or something. I don't need every revision all the way back in history. I only maybe care about the last one or the last couple of them. So, um, you know, pulling the overpass API is essentially like a, a, a shallow, cl shallow clone with only getting the, 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 lightest, the latest feature. Um, so then we, yeah, again, have this concept of data mappings, uh, working with OSM in, in a specific schema is easier and more practical for most traditional GIS users. Um, so it makes it easier to edit OSM data in a, ver in a versioned way in an external app, like an arc map or in some GIS, and then update the repository data and eventually commit your changes back into OSM Planet. So um, it's similar to the way Imposum works. You have a JSON definition. This is a pretty simple one. Uh, here's a little more complex one. Basically, just maps tags to um, same way a OSM to PG, PGSQL style works. I mean, it just maps tags to a schema. So um, you, uh, uh, so you, as you're, you can, if you do a like, let's say I download a whole country data from Geofabrique, I do an import. I can later, I can then do a map, and it's going to map all those to. Uh, schema classes, or you can do it in the process of, of importing or exporting. So as I'm, if I have a bunch of data in the canonical node and way trees in my GeoGit repository, I can export it back out using a mapping, and it'll create a shapefile um, based on that mapping or Postgres database, SQLite database, that sort of thing. Um, and you can also do the opposite, which is unmap. So if you have done a map, created a bunch of feature classes, done a bunch of edits with those in your traditional GIS, whether it be like ArcGIS or QGIS or that sort of thing, and you want to update the canonical node and way trees in your repo, you do this unmap command. And um, so this is the kind of whole workflow. You download or you update, download and then update your OSM data. You can in, export a mapped version to feature classes to edit, uh, edit, edit in your favorite GIS software, ArcMap, uh, QGIS, whatever you want to do. Um, and you can import that that uh, data back into the GeoGit repository. The import command is a little confusing in GeoGit. It's sort of like when you do git status. It's going like, uh, to go back and look at your, what, what changes have been made in that and import them in, as a change set and um, as a commit and commit them. And so then unmap, again, will update the canonical OSM data in your repo. <clears throat> you can commit it, create a new snapshot, and then you can uh, create an update and merge changes to the OSM planet if you want to. So change sets. Um, OSM change sets can be created with the create change set command. It's similar to the diff command, so you, you're diffing between two points in your, in your history. Here I'm just saying head and head one revision before this. I could give it a, a range of 10 commits or whatever. Um, you can do it between branches. You can do it between tags. Um, but basically you just create a change set, spit the change set out to an XML file. We can look at I mean, it's just a traditional OSM change set. And um, just to not... Uh, upset the import Nazis. We don't uh, have a geogit push command at the moment, but um, you're, it's up to you to curl that thing up back up to planet or whatever you want to do. So um, kind of further improvements. Um, Victor sort of had a defined period of time to work on this. He'd really, there's um, some issues with unmapping the ways, um, dealing with uh, 
polygons and uh, multi-polygons and handle relations better. And then we really want to write a GeoGet push command, GeoGet OSM push, that would uh, make it pretty easy to contribute back into OSM. I think you know, some people might abuse that very quickly, um, so we need to be a little careful of that. So um, beyond the command line interface, um, Victor's a QGIS core contributor and started to work on a desktop GeoGet-based GIS working towards, uh, I don't know, many of you have seen the source tree. There's a screenshot of it at the end. Um, that's an app from Atlassian that um, is used for managing uh, Git and um, Mercurial and other DCBS uh, repositories. So um, it's pretty rudimentary now. He's just gotten started on it. He, he tells me he's working on it this weekend because it's uh, poor weather there in Europe. And um, But basically, this is the original OSM history. I think that's change set number one from Steve and then Nick and, uh, and Peter, Peter took over. And uh, this is the beginnings of OSM in history. Um, I can go back and create a tag at these commits. I can um, look at what's been removed um, and then this is really the, the kind of core thing is looking at diffs, right? I want to look at what's changed in this, in this, uh, in this, between these two points in the, tr in the history. Um, and, um, you know, both for attributes and for geometry. Uh, I should point out the, in Git or most revision, I, all source code revision control, control systems, the unit of work is really a line of code, whereas in GeoGit, the unit of work is a feature. So you're comparing, uh, Git compares differences between lines in code. We compare differences between features. Um, so you know you could, you could have uh, attribute changes that are purely additive or purely subtractive or change existing attributes. Same with the geometry. You could add new nodes to a thing. Um, so we're working through all the UI around um, managing, uh, managing that, those merge processes and trying to get, I mean, this is sort of what source tree looks like. Um, You've got your, you can manage your remotes over here, manage your branches, do pushes and pulls, manage the history, look at the diffs. Um, this is actually looking at the Git, GeoGit uh, source code itself. Um, so anyway, this is a pretty cool tool and we're trying to go for this, work, work towards this sort of functionality inside QGIS and uh, eventually ArcGIS, I suppose. Um, so, uh, and then another thing, um, I work at OpenGeo and we've done uh, you know, quite a bit of integration with GeoServer and the sort of OGC uh, ecosystem around OGC standards. Um, so there's a GeoTools store for the GeoGit, uh, GeoGit set, data set. Um, and then GeoServer provides OGC services on top of that. So WMS, WFS, tiles, all that sort of thing. And then um, GeoServer can also provide a remote API. So you can do clones and pushes and pulls of your repository. And uh, there's been some basic, pretty rudimentary work on the uh, API for HTTP clients, so in-browser clients, that sort of thing versus um, Versus the, the remote API is much more low level and intended for machine to machine doing clones or pushes and pulls, whereas the uh, HTTP API is really designed for clients that are going to use it inside of a browser. So um, yeah, you just if you're a GeoServer user, you create a new repository. Um, you know, you get this kind of uh, OGC services. Um, you know, WFS. You can do your edits through WFS, WMS. Um, our partners are working on this. Have done a little bit of. Um, work towards looking at diffs in browser. There's your history at the bottom, diffs over on the side. Um, it's kind of rudimentary. We're just getting started on some of this stuff. Um, and then again, just quickly about the API. So there's kind of two APIs. There's a remote API, which is used again for machine to machine between, between remotes, um, clone and push and pull. And uh, there's HTTP client. And let's not call it REST because it's not really RESTful and we don't care about pleasing the REST Nazis now. It's just used for HTTP and uh, in browser. Um, so the remote API, so I can do a clone, GeoGit clone of, of any repo, it doesn't have to be an OSM repo. Um, does a pull, did a L, GeoGit LS tree, shows me what layers, um, tr layers or trees or feature classes, whatever you want to call them. Um, I can inspect the clone repo, look at the LS tree. I can do, uh, take a look at one of the, one of the trees or feature classes, um, look at its attributes, how many, how many records are in there, um, what's the latest commit, that sort of thing, just like Git. Um, I can do a pull, get new changes. Looks like it's added one feature, um, hasn't removed any, modified any. Um, and then you know I can like inspect the log and look at the look at the history. So um, what's gone on um, in that whatever branch I'm in. And push is not very interesting, but yes, of course you can push. So then again, the kind of simplistic HTTP client API at the moment. Um, you know I can do LS tree. I can get the log. 
um, do the history, manage remotes, that sort of thing. So what's next? Um, again, I uh, said at the beginning, this is a project funded by the Army Geospatial Center or um, Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, it's kind of a two-year project where at the end of the first year, um, reach this point of uh, being essentially feature complete and working towards optimizations. Uh, we haven't really done any premature optimization. There's a whole bunch of different vectors for optimization, both on disk format, performance. The one we're really focusing on, um, both at performance and interoperability level is the network. So we, we really fully expect, oh, I guess I'll just put it up there. Oh, oh sorry, uh, the, the OSM-based ideas. Um, I like to work, we've been talking with Brett Henderson quite a bit about making a more, um, uh, using the GeoGit library directly in, inside Osmosis for applying diffs, um, looking at uh, JAWSM integration. It'd be great to have an ID editor extension so that I could uh, do pushes and pulls from in there um, and uh, potentially edit straight against the GeoGit, hist uh, GeoGit uh, repository in ID. And then one of our, the kind of bars that's been set for us is um, by our funders is to maintain an entire history import of OSM and keep, in, keep up to date with the minutely updates. Um, in a GeoGit repository that anybody can clone or subset. Um, and as I was saying uh, be, er, be, before, I, before that slide, um, we're very interested in uh, interoperability at the uh, level of the network API. Um, and so we're, it's clear that there will be alternate implementations of the same idea, um, same maybe not using our code base. So we're looking pretty seriously at uh, helping to fund uh, libgeogit in C. And uh, that would provide, an, uh, and then an OGR driver could be used in tools like MapNIC, even potentially in Map Server, um, could be in ArcGIS through OGR. Um, that would open up a, a kind of a lot of tools. I mean, I, I, I'm, I've heard many times if there's a GeoTools driver and there's an OGR driver, you have yourself a standard. Um, so I think we've all heard conflation uh, more times today than we needed to, but um, it's a pretty big deal uh, doing conflation uh, automated. I mean, you can't, you can't uh, expect that somebody's going to look at every single diff that comes through that has merge conflicts and deal with them. You want to have automated tools for that. Um, and then in GeoGit, just like in Git, we have the concept of uh, pre and post commit hooks. So if you send a, uh, if you send a pull request or send a request to have something merged, um, kind of run an automated tool against that to do things like topology, topology validation, uh, maybe look at the attributes, um, basically run some automated checks, very similar to the way that you would do things with like with Travis continuous integration or Jenkins. So I could send a spatial, a spatial pull request and uh, have some automated checks run on that bef and either accept or reject the commit based on the output of that, uh, um, that analysis, you know, that, that, that script. Um, and then post commit hooks like, okay, yes, I accepted the commit, it's committed, let's, let's, uh, let's update some other thing, do some other thing, kick off some other you know, webhook kind of thing. Um, and then uh, map reduce and analytics, I'm particularly interested in uh, doing map reduce with, um, against GeoGit repositories, especially with history. Um, we uh, have been looking at different Hadoop implementations out there. Esri's new one is actually fairly interesting and is, uh, actually fairly open, um, really open. Um, and then in the other desktop integration, I mean, we're sort of looking at how to integrate it best with ArcGIS uh, desktop. That's a tool that's not going anywhere for a vast majority of real world GIS users. Um, and then there's this concept of automated repository sync, um, like in the event of uh, you know, there being no merge conflicts, um, repository should be able to say and stay in sync automatically um, without having somebody have to kick off the push or the pull uh, every, every time. Um, so again, uh, it's an open source project. If you're a U.S. taxpayer, it's funded by your taxpayer dollars. Um, so get involved, and we really re welcome pull requests. It's uh, a lot of my job to um, get people, you know, shepherded into the community, participating, uh, working on different parts of the code. There's a, kind of three main companies that work on it, but we're um, really encouraging anyone else to get involved. And uh, it doesn't have to be just in this repository. Again, you can take the same idea write it in Go or Node.js or whatever, go for it. Um, but let's, uh, let me know when you got a remote up and we'll, I'll try and clone it. Um, and mailing list issue tracker, some further reading there. Uh, the manual project guide has a lot of background, some blog posts with uh, white papers. Um, and that's it, so thanks. And again, uh, I'm really giving a talk about primarily Victor's work. I don't really uh, write that much code for this. Um, sort of the first uh, GeoGit super user, you could say. So. That's it. Any questions? Uh, 
Uh, I mean, sorry, I'm not sure I understand the, the question. Am I? Yeah, but I mean, I don't think anyone would work directly against the, the entire repository. You check out a chunk of it, you do a sparse or a shallow clone, check out a chunk of it, work, work on that and send it back. I mean, nobody's, unless you're editing, you know, global administrative boundaries, you've got no reason to be working with an entire checkout. You should have some subset of that. And yeah, I mean, and that's one of the kind of tools we use for the benchmarks is Geofabric exports and particularly like, you know, check like grab the Geofabric export of Germany, do an import with it, work with, you know, map it to feature classes, do some work with it. But even at that scale, I think um, it's really designed to, you know, work with some, you know, whether you're doing a subset by bounding box or by tags, you should be working with some subset. You, I, I um, uh, the sort of on disk, um, on disk format current in development is like a Berkeley database. You're not gonna create a Berkeley database with all of OSM, but th that's in the object store. And uh, what we do in the object store is like work with, you know, distributed, distributed uh, object store. Like uh, we're looking at a few different ones, React and Redis. And so y y if, if you made a complete clone of all of OSM with all history, I don't, there's very few people that would need to like work with that full clone. You would grab some chunk of it and work with it. Does that answer your question or? Yeah. Your, your, um, the way that you edit source code is tangential to the way that you manage versioning, right? So, I mean, you have your working tree that are sitting in files, and you can go edit those files in Eclipse or in Emacs or in VI or whatever, but you, have your, you use Git to manage the, the versioning and history, and we sort of have the same concept here. You can keep your working tree in PostGIS or in Oracle Spatial or in, you know, whatever, and do your work in those workflows and let GeoGit manage the versioning. You can't, like the GeoTools driver does pick up, it, it works directly with the on-disk format, right? So it, it's reading straight off the on-disk format of, of, of the GeoGit repository. But really, like, you do this, you, you, you work in your working tree, which is generally like a PostGIS database, or um, you work in your normal GIS tools and let the history get managed separately. They're tangential things, how you, how you edit and how you manage versioning. One of you two. <laughs> yeah. Well, one problem with the JIT is that you have to uh, clone whole repository. If you want. Right, yeah, that's obviously not practical for most things in GeoGit, which is why we have both, both a, a, a sparse and shallow clone. We, again, sparse is for checking out with a filter or query. Uh, whether that's bounding box or tag based, and then s s the shallow clone is like I don't need the entire history. I could care less about having the entire history. I want only the latest revision. Um, I I, I want to be able to keep versioning it. I want to contribute my changes back, but I don't uh, I don't need the entire history, right? I, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna clone Tiger, let's say I don't need every revision of Tiger. I only need the last one. But as I send you know merge rec pull requests back, I want mine to wind up in the history. It, so it's it's. You, we have this concept in Git. You can check out just a, just one tree out of a Git, but I mean, it's not in Git. Generally, yes, you check out the entire repository, but that's not practical or even really useful in, in GeoGit in most cases, unless you're working with like a small shapefile or you know small set of data, um, and you are okay to have the entire history. You don't need the entire history. You can limit your history. Like I only want the last two revisions or last three revisions. What's that? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we call it shallow, shallow clone. And you can do them together, obviously, sparse and shallow clone together. So this with more numbers, like, like, oh, 100% vector. There's nothing raster about this, yeah. I don't see a real use case for, like, versioning rasters. I have, yeah, I mean, they're not, they're not under revision or edited, right? I mean, I don't, I don't. We've had this question before, and I don't, I mean, I guess I'd have to hear what use case you have for like doing versioning with rasters. I mean, it seems like you just want to keep the history. Yeah, yeah, you're going to keep a couple of ver, but I, yeah, so it's, it's just strictly, strictly vector based. Yeah, it's usable, but it, like, uh, again, there's sort of, we've gotten to the stage of being feature complete, and there's a, several vectors for optimization, and we're looking at some of them specifically. Like, we don't really worry about currently about, 
optimizing disk space, let's say, or like compression. We're really focused on optimization at the network level. Um, we don't, uh, like some things are quite slow. So yes, you can, it's a great toy right now. Um, and uh, you will quickly write to the email list saying, ah, I tried to import all of this, you know, this and like just exploded. And probably a lot of that has to do with you using a, the Berkeley database, which is the kind of default, whereas we're working on like other object stores that are inherently scalable versus dealing, doing kind of toy stuff with, with BDB. So, anyone else? Yeah. Right, so when you're pulling from overpass, you're only pulling the latest, um, latest copy, right? So that you, you get no history with that. If you want to build up history, you're going to have to use the import change set or import history to like pull change sets that are touching it. Okay, I'll take a look at that. I, um, I, again, I don't, it's Victor here that has been working on this. I'll, I'll bring that back. I, I, I know he's, he has kind of been collecting up quite a few suggestions for the overpass folks um, and waiting to send them until he's gotten all the way through this. But one of them is dealing with that newer clause and I'll, I'll have to look at augmented disk. I haven't, I haven't looked at it. So. Yeah, okay, I'll take a look. Ian's one here that's tried to use regular Git for shapefiles. Um, how's that going? Not very well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we did some prototypes of this on top of Git itself at one point and um, I think Nathaniel, if he's in here, he's done also put natural earth and you just get like massive repository bloat really quickly. Um, so yeah, we'd like to, it, it's, it's pretty experimental. It's like, a, like, again, it's like a two year project and we don't have any um, huge rush to push it out to market. I mean, we've got big government customers paying for it, but again, it's your tax dollars at work. So if you want to uh, participate. Can you talk to GitHub at all about integrating? Yeah, I mean, we think, I mean, uh, so, We've talked a lot about this concept of keeping your project in normal Git, right? So you have your scripts, your styles, all that sort of thing, and like adding a GeoGit repository as a sub-module, even though I can't stand sub-modules. But um, no, I mean, we haven't, but we've, we've thought about this, like, like how do you keep, like if you've got an entire project that's got some data, some scripts, some styles, like how do you keep those things together? How do we deal with like a project that contains a Git repo and a GeoGit repo? Um, but yeah, I, uh, GitHub secret sauce is really in like how the hell they scale that thing and we're sort of taking the same tact, so. I think it would be interesting in uh, the social aspect of the social, the comments and the pull requests and all that, but, and they, they have a brand new purpose. Maybe that brand new, who's interested in expanding their sure. geography ideas. So. Yeah, I mean this whole concept of uh, pull requests in OSM, I mean, and I, I I know this is controversial and political, but I, I think that the, you know, park service should have some ability to, you know, we're the guardians or we're the, you know, stewards of this data. And if you want to make major changes to this area in OSM, that's, we're the landowner, then you should send a pull request and we should get to review that. And part of the point of all of GeoGit is really to integrate this kind of versioning into existing workflows. So again, it works with Oracle or with Sp SQL, SQL Server, whatever. So I, I, yeah, I'd like to get to that point where it can, it, they can actually integrate OSM into their workflows long-term where they're doing pushes and pulls on a regular basis versus just like chuck some import over the wall and then argue about how they keep it up to date. So. That's Ian right here. Ian did that for them. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. And um, again, I think Nathaniel's, uh, Nathaniel Kelso is also natural. I don't know, has anybody else tried to like use spatial data on Git itself? Aaron, have you? How'd it go? Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it also deals with things on a line by line basis. So unless you can figure out how to get each of your, there's no way to do diffs, right? Because it, it, you know, 
if, if, if you can structure your JSON file so it's like one feature per line, then Git knows how to deal, like you can do a dit, but there's really no way to like look at, oh, what, what, how has the geometry changed or how has the attributes changed? And that's really like what we're trying to solve is like being able to do diffs and manage them effectively and do merges and so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we have, again, we have these import and export commands, like, so I can dump it. We don't, uh, somebody's asked about GeoJSON as well. I should have some just, like, let you do your work in GeoJSON um, and just do imports um, so you can, work. That, that'd be a good, idea. we'll have to talk about that because I've had a few people ask now. But it's primarily, like, your working tree, like, in Git is either shapefiles, Postgres database, Spatialite, Oracle Spatial, um, and potentially, like, OSM XML files. We haven't really gotten to that sort of, I mean, it works the same way. You could do an export, open it up in JAWS and do some edits go back and say, you know, do a diff on that, but, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, yeah, and, sorry, I can't quite hear you. Well, yeah, I mean, when you're doing a, like, if, I, if I've got two versions of the same feature, right, I want to look at what attributes have changed and the geometries changed. I don't know, I mean, I guess you could do a diff, and it might be useful to do a diff on a particular attribute, but I'd rather just look at the feature as a whole and see what attributes have changed between these two versions of the same thing, whether there's new attributes have been added, some attributes have been removed, or some attributes have changed. Um, but it's, it's, it's essentially just key value. I mean, it's the same thing. It's just, a, it's just this flat key value. Um, so could be done, but yeah, we stick with the unit of work being a one feature, and we have these starting to build out these tools for like looking at different diff, geometry diffs. So, and at, the attribute diffs is fairly simple. It's the geometry diffs that are more difficult. Any other question? Okay, cool. Thanks. <laughs>